We reported that, of course, on Hurricane Ian, but here's something you didn't really hear about. When the storm smashed into central Florida, it took out hundreds of thousands of bee colonies and wiped out a vital link in our food chain. Well, now beekeepers are still struggling from these losses. Our Bill Weir met with some of them and he joins us now. I never thought about this. Me neither. However, I know bees are very important to the whole ecosystem. More than ever. When we talk, uh, when we have the birds and the bees talk, <laughs> It takes on a whole new importance now because one out of every three bites of food is courtesy of a pollinator like a bee wow. or a butterfly. And they're in deep trouble as a result of sort of colliding climate crises. I went down to Arcadia, Florida to get a state of things. These guys know the state of agriculture better than ever. Anyone really? And few are sadder and more worried. Take a mm. look. Now you got to get a handful of bees. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not usually in the habit of accepting a handful of stinging insects, but Keith Council has a 40-year professional relationship with honeybees. And you never, rarely wear a veil or gloves or anything. Don't really need to. And these days, they need all the love they can get. Hurricane Ian arrived at the worst possible time for this business, just as beekeepers from around the country were set up to catch the autumn bloom of the Brazilian pepper tree. The whole yard went under. The storm drowned and crushed hundreds of thousands of hives, killing countless millions of bees. It's gone. We're going to have to come back. There ain't nothing left. You could actually see a water line where it came up to here. And because Ian blew away so much vegetation, those that survived are starving. Some of these bees have gotten three shots of feed, and that's a gallon. So you're talking about 36 pounds of feed already and you can still go back after they suck the feed down and it looks like they never were fed at all. They're just starving. They're just starving, yeah, it's nonstop. So it's just an added cost and you're just trying to do the best. You have to make that tough decision of, really, is it worth the money, uh, the financial cost to try to save it, or do you just have to walk away and, and take your medicine? This is all bee food. This will be uh, used uh, for liquid bee food, yep. At Man Lake Bee and Ag Supply, they're mixing sugar water as fast as they can. And while some bee farmers file for federal relief, the Greater Good Charity is giving away a quarter ton of pollen substitute. Where we have donated meals to food pantries for humans, we've donated animal supplies to animal shelters, and now we're donating this bee pollen substitute to these farmers here. Can't forget the bottom of the food chain, yeah, right? Can't, can't forget <laughs> what helps get all the other food uh, to, to the table as well. But even if their bees recover, the whole business depends on the health of the almond crop in California, now shrinking under mega drought. If the drought takes out the almond crop in California, that the whole beekeeping industry is gonna be in trouble. And, and there's no feral bees. There's no, wild bees can't survive on their own. He explains that pesticides, development, and invasive pests have made it impossible for bees to survive without deliberate human care. And if all the beekeepers released all of their bees, every beekeeper in the country, if they just released all their bees into the wild, we estimate it'd be about two to three years before bees would just collapse. Bees are the most important farmer. They're the most forgotten as well. And that's why we just need the entire public to really continue to get involved in bees. And, and a little, two beehives makes a big impact. They went totally underwater somehow made it. In the meantime, all Keith can do is pick up the pieces and focus on the survivors, like the hive he found drowned inside a water meter box near Fort Myers Beach. It's a different feeling when you have bees walking all it over really you. It really is, it really yeah. is. And nobody's getting stung. No. Yeah. You know, they're doing their thing. Maybe they can sense uh, we're rooting for them, you know? Well, and that's... We appreciate them. That's part of the thing. You have to you have to treat them with respect. When you get down to it, the bees are the pillars to all ag culture, and it's, they're the pillars to our whole civilization. Hmm. Of course, he's a trained beekeeper. Don't try that at home, <laughs> reaching into a hive. But no stings. They're completely wow. chill, as long as we were. I brought you some old Florida Bee Company honey. Okay. Orange blossom and, and Florida palmetto I here. From down there, this is Jeremy Ham's company. You saw him in the piece there. I got you some, Don, Caitlin. <laughs> They're cutting two jars over there. I got a third jar for you guys. You can fight over the cinnamon spread. That's the best. But really, I mean, that's the thing that scared me is that we're now in a place where bees can't live without us. 
And we can't live without bees. So we got to do something so better. So you got to pay attention to what's happening. Those little busy business partners. Busy. I was telling Bill, guys, in the break that this is like what I give to my kids whenever they're sick or under the weather. Like it's like this natural healer. It's good anything. for allergies. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's uh, and and they're keeping Thank us alive. You, Bill. We're feeding them. They're feeding us. Thank and you, it Bill. tastes good. And it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> As a bonus. <laughs> a spoon of honey for you in the break. <laughs>